Does the idea of research overwhelm you? Do you ever find yourself running into walls with your writing projects because you're missing information and then frantically Google searching what you need to know and falling down rabbit holes of information that seem to go on forever? If so, don't worry, you're not alone. And research doesn't have to be overwhelming. It can actually be fun and inspiring. Over the past 10 years of writing novels and doing lots of research for them, I have learned through trial and error <laughs> the best techniques for learning new information and the biggest pitfalls to avoid. And that's what I want to share with you today. In this video, we are going to uncover the four biggest do's and don'ts of writing research. I'll show you not just what pitfalls to avoid and that a lot of writers make the mistake of falling into these traps, not just what to avoid, but I'll also show you what to do instead to write a book that feels authentic and realistic and impresses your readers. It doesn't matter if the research you're doing for your book is scientific, geographical, historical, medical, or social, whatever kind of research you're doing, this video will empower you to go forth into your research process with confidence and actually have fun doing it and not get overwhelmed. So if you're ready to dive into this, grab a notebook and let's get started. Why does your story matter? Good question. What if I told you that there's a science behind every great story? I don't just teach you how to write. I teach you how to change the world with your story and make your author dreams come true. Number one, don't fall down the endless rabbit hole of learning unnecessary information. It's easy to get caught in this overwhelming cycle of research and asking questions and finding answers and asking questions and finding answers. You can do that literally forever. And I think we've all experienced this as writers, right? We'll find that we bump into a wall. Okay, I need an answer to this question. We go to Google, we start to research it. We start falling down this rabbit hole, finding all these different little bunny trails of, oh, that's interesting, that's fat. Oh, that raises another question, that raises another question. And before you know it, you have 10 times more questions than you started this Google search with. This is the vicious cycle of learning useless information. <laughs> Not that it's all going to be useless because maybe you will use some of it, but right now it's not necessary to know. I, for one, love learning new things. I find it really fascinating to research stuff that I don't know and to learn interesting facts, but I realize that about myself and I have to put that in check and make sure that I prioritize what I'm researching, especially if I'm in the midst of the writing process. So on the flip side of this, do research the crucial stuff now and save the trivial stuff for later. And by crucial stuff, what I mean is the stuff that actually matters to the plot of your story and your character arcs. The stuff that if you get it wrong or inaccurate now, it's going to be a major overhaul to change it later. For historical research, this could look like making sure the time period you're writing in is accurate based on the historical events your book centers around, or making sure your characters aren't freezing to death in the Amazon rainforest. These are the things that support your whole story, okay? So if you get them wrong and you have to fundamentally change the story because of it, you wanna research those things first. They're crucial, okay? But for the smaller things, the trivial things, those things are easy to fix after the fact. For example, say you're writing a Victorian period piece and you have this trivial detail that your characters have electric lights in their house instead of gaslight, but then later you learn that at that year, electric lights in the home was not a thing. Well, it wouldn't be that hard to change it afterwards because there's probably like only a few mentions of it. However, if your entire plot hinges upon the character's house burning down because of the electric lights, well then, we'll have to rethink whether this is a crucial piece of information or a trivial, trivial piece of information. So as you can see, this entirely depends on the story you're writing. So use discernment here. I would recommend making two lists, one with crucial information I need to know, one with trivial information I need to know, and when you are going about your researching process, prioritize the crucial information and don't let the trivial information slow down your writing process. If needed, just put a placeholder for now and come back later. Number two, 
don't go to Hollywood for your research. This seems like it should be a no-brainer, but you would not believe how many people do this. <laughs> when you publish your book, the last thing you want is for a reader coming to you and asking, is that realistic? Is that accurate? Does that really happen? And you have to reply by saying, I don't know, I saw it in a movie once, so I guess it must be. I'm sure every one of us has seen movies that defy all logic and physics and common sense with outrageously unrealistic events. But even if a movie appears to be realistic and well-researched, still, use discernment, do your own research, don't use this movie as concrete proof that the subject matter is accurately portrayed. Imagine how convoluted our information would become if we all took our cues from different stories. It would be like this never-ending game of telephone where as we go, information just gets less and less realistic and more inaccurate. Do go to reliable sources, such as experts and people who have firsthand experience of the thing you're writing about. When it comes to writing about things I don't personally know about, I like to go to real human sources who have experienced this thing firsthand. For geographical research, go to people who actually live in the place you're writing about or have really good knowledge of it. For medical research, talk to people who have experienced the medical conditions you're writing about. For historic research, go to historians or history buffs or people who write blogs about this particular time in history and are an expert on it because they've studied it so much. For scientific research, go to scientists or experts in the field that you're writing about. Nothing beats firsthand experience. It will add that layer of authenticity to your story and it will feel real and lived in and almost like someone who actually experienced this thing firsthand wrote about it. That's what you want. And that's what you can learn and pick up by going to actual human beings <laughs> who have experienced these things firsthand. Before we continue on to mistake number three, I just wanna really quickly interrupt myself here to tell you guys about a special live training that I'm hosting this weekend, diving even deeper into research. So in this video, I'm just giving you some quick tips, mistakes to avoid with research and what to do instead. But in this live training, we're going to dive super deep into the topic of research and I'm going to show you my tried and true techniques for becoming an expert in what you're writing about and simplifying the whole process. You don't wanna miss this special live training. If you have any doubts about what you're researching or what you're writing, or you are afraid that because you don't know this thing firsthand experientially, you won't be able to write it accurately. If any of those doubts are coming up in your mind right now, you need to come to this live training. I'm going to share with you the life-saving techniques that have helped to make my writing more believable, accurate, and realistic. In this training, you will learn how to prioritize and organize your research tasks, whether your research is scientific, medical, historical, geographical, or social. My favorite weird but effective hack for effortlessly sounding like an expert in any area. How to narrow down your research into precise questions, find your answers, and use them to strengthen your story. How to use powerful free tools to learn specifics you can't uncover with internet searches. This one technique saved my writing life. I can't wait to share it with you. And finally, my query template for reaching out to experts so that you can build rewarding, authentic relationships with people who will take your story to the next level. This training is every valuable lesson I have ever learned about researching compiled into a power-packed teaching that is sure to take your writing to that next level of believability and authenticity. Since implementing these techniques that I'm gonna share in this training, I have had so many readers reach out to me who are experts in the fields that I wrote about or in the topics that I wrote about to tell me, to congratulate me on how accurately and how realistically I wrote those subjects. And let me just tell you, that is such a rewarding feeling to know that, wow, somebody who is actually an expert read this after the fact and they were impressed by it. It's so cool, it's so rewarding. And I want you to have that feeling too. I want you to be able to write something that you can put out there confidently and impress your readers, even the ones who are experts in this 
topic that you're researching about. So you don't wanna miss this live training. It is happening Saturday, March 2nd at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And if you can't make it to the live stream, don't worry, you can watch the replay as many times as you want. When you click the link below this video, sign up, save your spot, space is limited. I want you to get in on this while you still can. And it's going to be an amazing live training. I can't wait to see you on Saturday. Also, when you join my Patreon to sign up to watch this live training, you not only get access to this upcoming training, but you also get access to my entire archive vault of previous live trainings. That's over 17 hours of in-depth teaching on subjects like writing romance, writing platonic relationships, plotting your book, outlining, publishing, and so much more. So. If you want in on all of that, it's a huge resource. It's amazing. You'll love it. <laughs> Click the link below this video, save your spot at the live training and start digging into the archive vault as well. I can't wait to see you this Saturday and dive even deeper into research. Okay, let's get back to the do's and don'ts of researching. Number three, don't be afraid to ask real people questions. I've seen so many writers who are intimidated by the idea of reaching out to experts and asking them questions. And I think a lot of writers feel nervous about this because they feel like an amateur enthusiast who knows nothing. But the fact that you are willing to learn new things proves that you're doing your research well. And experts respect that, especially if they've seen this topic or this subject matter misrepresented or inaccurately or poorly represented in fiction so far. They are going to have so much respect for you as a writer who is researching and doing the work to write this subject matter believably, honestly, and authentically. So don't be afraid to talk to people. It will transform your writing life. This is your research rocket fuel. It's the shortcut to learning everything you need to know. Just get beyond this hurdle of your fear. There's nothing to be afraid of. So on the flip side, do reach out to real people with your questions and let them read your work. I know the idea of talking to new people and asking them questions, especially when you feel like they know so much more than you do, can be a little bit intimidating at first, but believe me, it is so worth it. You'll be able to learn so much more by asking them specific questions and then follow-up questions and then even letting them read some of your work. I highly recommend doing this. I did this for my last book, The Other World, when I was researching stuff about aviation and bush pilots. I knew nothing going into it. I was an amateur enthusiast and had learned a little bit here and there just through my own love for aviation. But as I started to reach out to people who were former bush pilots and who had knowledge of even the same places that I was writing about. I was able to ask specific questions and then ask follow-up questions and then even share a few pages of my work with these bush pilots and have them read it and give me feedback. And that just helped so much to make my writing feel so much more authentic. I was even able to weave some of the phrases and the language that they used into my book to make it feel more authentic and real. And I started this whole process by simply asking a few questions on Quora, which is a popular question and answer website. And from there, you can actually find experts. I was able to reach out to a few experts and then find their blogs and go deeper from there. So that's a great place to start. If you have no idea what you're doing, ask a few questions on Quora and you'll be amazed by the answers you receive and the relationships that may begin to grow from there. Number four, don't rely on artificial intelligence to give you infallible answers. I remember once asking an AI tool to give me a plot summary of a movie, several movies actually, and what it came out with was not the plot of the movie. It just made up its own plot. I was had a laugh over it because it was absolutely ridiculous, <laughs> but <laughs> that just goes to show you don't want to rely upon AI for infallible knowledge, okay? It is capable of being wrong, and it even tells you that. So don't trust it completely. Do leverage AI tools as a search engine or an unofficial guide to narrow down your research. Though I have mixed feelings about AI, I do realize that there are responsible ways to use AI tools as search engines and as a tool to narrow down the information you're looking for so that you don't have to be lost wading through this sea of information on the internet. 
Because AI tools like ChatGPT comb the internet and gather all this information, you're able to use them as search engines, like a better version of Google to give you more precise, narrowed down information. And it can save you thousands of hours of sifting through articles that don't answer your questions. However, if you're not using these AI tools properly, it will be just as bad as sifting through thousands of articles. You won't be able to precisely find the exact answers you're looking for. And that's why in this training that's coming up this weekend, I'm going to be showing you the steps that you should take while you use these AI tools to get the most out of them. Literally, it's just like two steps that if you don't take these two steps, you will not get the best information. But if you do take them, you can get the exact answers you're looking for. So I'm going to show you how to leverage this for your own writing projects in my upcoming live training this weekend. Don't forget to save your spot at the link below. Again, space is limited. I want you to be in on this. I want you to make the most of your research process and let it be inspiring and fun and get authentic, real, accurate information that will take your book to that next level. Again, this training is happening Saturday, March 2nd at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I want to take you by the hand and show you all of these incredible techniques that have saved my researching life <laughs> when writing and some of the hacks that helped me out as well. And some of these hacks, they might seem silly at first. <laughs> they might seem like, how does that work? But they work, trust me. So save your spot, link in description. I can't wait to see you there. And again, remember you get access to the entire vault of previous live trainings when you sign up for this live training. So much value in the vault, in my Patreon. So click the link below and get started. Also comment below and join the discussion. Tell me what is your favorite part of the research process? What is it that you're currently researching for your writing project? I would love to hear about it. Smash that like button if you liked this video and be sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already because I post writing videos every single Wednesday and I would love to have you here in the community. Until next week, my friend, rock on.